Just worship the Lord Wherever you are oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shiri Bakaya Shiri Bakaya Bringing our praises, Lord. Bringing our worship as an offering, as an aroma, Lord. Oh, yeah. Come on, just begin to worship Him. Ora baba rata na mandele bo shanda la bagana mandele bo yana na ma shanda la bagana mandele bo yana na ma shodolo bo la baka Ora baba rata na mandele bo yana na ma shanda ya ya Worship you, Jesus. Come on, everybody, just lift your voice and worship Him. Worship the risen King. Worship the risen Lord. Worship, worship our King, Savior. Hallelujah. Worship Him. We worship. Savior Redeemer, Ira Bacana Mandala Bacana Mahandele Borodora Bodala Baranana Mahasha Ura Babariana La Mandala Baranana Masha Dala Baranana Mandeli Vidiana Namasso Dolo Bodala Bacana Mandala Baca Ura Babariana Lividiana Namashaya Ira Babariana Mandeli Vidiana Namasso Rabaca Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we are here. We gather here to worship. We gather here to sing your praises. We gather here, Lord, to honor you. Yes, Lord, we want to remember the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus, indeed, Jesus is alive. We give you praise. We give you glory. Today, we want to praise you with all of our life, with all of our hearts. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just bless us here in this church and bless all those who are joining us through online service. Bless our hearts with your word. Bless our heart with the presence of God. Lord, speak to us personally. We pray that this service will be different from other services. Lord, we pray that you will cause us to be alive with you, to rise with you, to resurrect with you in the name of Jesus. We pray for the transforming power of the resurrection to touch our life today. Hallelujah. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the hallelujah. Just open your heart and lift your heart to Jesus with thanksgiving. Jesus, we pray. We pray today. Come on, sing. I 
Yes, Lord. We praise you. We raise a hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Me. 
I just worship Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise You, we worship You. We give You the glory. We give You the praise, honor, blessing, and glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise You, Lord. Praise You, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we rejoice in you. We can praise you. We can bless you for what you have done for us. Thank you so much for Jesus who came to die for us, to set us free, to save us, and to give us new life, and to give us eternal life. Lord, thank you so much. Be with us today until the end of the service today, Lord. Bless us all, those who are here and those who are online. Bless them, we pray. We thank you so much. We worship you, Jesus. We give you all the glory and all the honor with all of our hearts, with all of our soul. Bless you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Praise his name forever and ever. Amen. Amen. He is risen. Hallelujah. Today is a celebration. We are here today to celebrate the resurrection of our Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, uh, there are some announcements yeah, before we go further into our service this morning. Yeah, our Bahasa uh, today, we will postpone to next week uh, because we will have a week service for our brother Stephen and also sister Judy's on the passing of their mother. So we will pay respect to them. So the Bahasa tonight will move to next week. Yeah, please take note for those of us who join our Bahasa service online. Yeah. And also our uh, next announcement. Yeah, our uh, Friday prayer meeting and also a Bible study is on every Friday. Uh, those of us who are in Ipo, you can join us in church because church is now open for prayer meeting, yeah? And also to those who join online, it is through Zoom. So please, yeah, do approach us to get the, the link to the Zoom account so you can join us also through online, yeah? And also, of course, uh, as usual, our Sunday service, Morning, yeah, 11, uh, English service at 11, and Bahasa at 7.45, yeah, next week. Yeah, do share this live video to your friends and your family, that they will also be blessed by the word of God this morning. And also another announcement, we would like to thank, yeah, we would like to thank each and every one of us who has contributed to the TV for the church. Let's give us, you know, give yourself an applause, yeah. It is to extend the works of the Lord. We thank you so much for your support and the blessing that you have given to the church this morning. Okay. Now, uh, as we go into further, yeah, we will collect our offerings. But I will pass this time to Pastor Carlo. Thank you, Shikaina. Yeah, but before that, again, I want to... Uh, say again, thank you to everybody who contributed for the TV, all right, church members, and also friends from uh, uh, outside, you know, our partners. So we thank you so much. Uh, why we uh, put the TV on here because of the projectors. After seven years, it expires. So it happens that both of them, you know, uh, give way and expire. So uh, we decided to put uh, TV all right, better resolution, and also maybe it will last longer because we just use it uh, a few times a week. Okay, so thank you so much for that. We believe the Lord will also bless you. And uh, thank you for showing your love for the Lord and love for the church. Right, we really appreciate that as a church. We really say thank you to everybody. Okay, so praise God, praise God. You know, things are very easy to do uh, when we have projects. Uh, in the church or things to do in the church actually there are many things we want to do you know in my heart we have many things to do um, especially 
um, supporting ministries. You know, I know our ministry here is very small, and uh, of course we also need finances. But uh, I have a heart to support ministry, especially pastors uh, that is in difficulties. All right, uh, they are pioneering churches, they are small churches, and pastors are a very uh, difficult situation. And they have a heart to serve the Lord. They really sacrifice and pastor their churches. I know a few of them, and I have a heart to support them. You know, if we can do something like if we collect a mission fund for the support of this ministry, I think that will be good. All right, uh, we are not asking so much from you, but we are giving you opportunity actually to be blessed, right? When we give, and as a church, when we give also, we will be blessed. You know, that is how it works in the kingdom of God. All right, so uh, God is the one who will provide for us. He's the one that sustains us. Uh, if we can just do more, you know, to just to bless other people, and uh, especially ministries, if we can do that then um, that will be wonderful. But again, it depends on our capacity, our ability, and also we will see how uh, we can do that. All right? Praise God. Now, this morning, I want to encourage you in your giving. Um, uh, <coughs> we, we have been here for seven years. Huh? Yeah, this is our seven years. Yeah. Uh, next month. Next month, seven years. Eight years. All right. Yeah, I don't, I don't count one. <laughs> so coming to eight years, uh, <coughs> we, we want to encourage every one of us to be generous um, and also be, be faithful and committed, especially in our tithing, because tithing belongs to God. And that is how God, uh, uh, He designed it like that, even from the Old Testament, how He uh, sustained uh, the tabernacle with the children of Israel, the house of God, the ministry, you know, he uh, instructed the children of Israel to give their tithes uh, to the temple uh, so that they can uh, serve the temple and also to support the, the priests and the Levites that is serving in the temple uh, full time because the Levites, the Bible says, they have no inheritance with the children of Israel. The only one tribe that have no inheritance. The children of Israel, when they went into the promised land, the promised land was divided to every tribe. So every tribe have a portion of the promised land. And that was their inheritance. That's what they inherited until today. But God said, you separate the Levites for me. And the Levites shall have no inheritance. All right? God said, I am the inheritance. Why God separate the Levites you know, uh, and, and did not give them any inheritance? Because the Levites will serve the Lord. In the temple, all right? They will serve God in the temple. And the children of Israel uh, give their tithes to the temple and to the Levites to support the Levites and also to, uh, for the service of the temple. And that is what God designed for us. And that's why today we give our tithes uh, to the church. Uh, that tithes, the Bible says, is holy. It belongs to the Lord. So let us be faithful with that. You know, if we can just be faithful with that, I, I believe our church also will do better, will do well. All right? And also in an offering time, you know, uh, give generously. Give generously. All right? Um, if you cannot come to church, you can transfer your offering through online. It doesn't mean you don't come to church, you don't bring your offering. Today we have hybrid uh, worship services and we have online uh, offering, online uh, tithing. So you can give any time. Uh, when the Lord bless you, when the Lord bless your business, or maybe when the Lord bless you with, uh, you know, finances, you know, give your tithes and, and, and bless the church. Uh, that's the reason why God bless you more, because so, uh, so that you can give more to the ministry, to the church. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. That is, that is how it works in the church. That is how it works in the church. Uh, that, that is what I do also. We, we, we give more. We give more. All right. Even with raising funds for, the, for, for this TB, we give. We give more. If possible, we, we want to give more if we can. All right? So when God bless you with something, remember the church. When God prosper you, remember the church. Remember the ministry. Because this is our church. This is our ministry. This is your church. We belong to this church. And we love this church. Let us bless the church. Let us support the church. Even though our church is small. All right? But if we can work together, we can put our hearts here and give our hearts to the Lord, I believe we can do even better. 
Hallelujah. All right? Life is, is so short, you know. There's nothing wrong to be rich, nothing wrong to uh, be blessed financially. There's nothing wrong. We should pray for that. Why? Because it's for your good. It's for your life. It's for your family. It's for your children. And also for the glory of God. It's for the church. When the Lord blessed you more, you can bless the church more. Hallelujah. All right? So I want to encourage you today to give to the Lord cheerfully, uh, generously. Remember your tithes. Remember your offering to the Lord. And um, if, if you cannot come to church to bring your offering to the church, you can transfer your offering and your tithing online. We have it in our Facebook. We have it in our WhatsApp group. We have it in, uh, you know, in the flyer uh, sending to you. So you can record it in your phone, save that in your phone, or add it into your uh, favorites in your uh, bank account so that easy for you to transfer uh, any time. Yeah? I've done that. I don't know how many of you have done that. I put the church account into my uh, bank account, my, the add, uh, to add, add it to the favorites there. So every time I want to transfer my tithes and offering, I can just go into that and then transfer it online. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why sometimes you don't see me give offering here in the church because I already transfer it. Oh, I will transfer it online. All right. Praise God. So let us pray for the offering today. Hallelujah. Offering is a worship. So when we give our offering and tithes, you know, let your heart go to God and say, Lord, thank you for blessing me with this. You know, and I, I'm bringing back what belongs to you. And I want to bless you and bless your work, Lord, with this offering. And thank you so much, Lord, for always providing for us, taking care of our life and, you know, shower, showering down your blessing into our life. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Bless us today. Bless the offering. Bless the tithes, Lord, that will be brought to you today. Lord, even from here in this church and also from those who are watching us online, thank you for the heart of your people. Thank you for their generosity. Thank you for their love for you. And thank you, Lord, for their love for the church, their commitment, and their faithfulness. You promise and you said in your word, the faithful man shall abound with blessings. And you said in your word, in the house of the righteous are much treasures. Thank you. You said in your word, if we honor you with the first fruit of our increase, you will make our vats to overflow with wine. With blessing. You said when we give our tithes, you will open the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing for us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bless every hand that give me pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. So you can take time to give your offering. Praise the Lord. Give cheerfully, generously to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And we want to thank you and appreciate all of your friends and especially church members for your support. And um, sometimes Brother Chia will, will show me the bank statement and he asks me, what? who is this? What is this name? Who is this name? Sometimes we do not even know those names, but they, they saw our, our church account number and they give the offering and then they bless the church. So we praise God for those people also uh, who was moved by the Lord and blessed the church. So praise God, praise God, and praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, Brother Stephen is not here today. Uh, Judy also because the mother passed away yesterday. And uh, I think today they are busy preparing for tonight uh, wake service. All right. Um, if anybody wants to go there to pay last respect and to encourage them, uh, you can do that. All right. But... Uh, they also try to minimize the uh, the crowd, even though there is no limit already for the wake service and the church and the uh, meeting. There is no limit, yeah. But we just keep to the SOP. Uh, that is very important. Okay, so praise God. So we extend our condolences to them. Uh, the mother is 95 years old. Wow, what a, what a great age, yeah. I'm uh, looking forward tonight to share the word of God to them. Uh, a celebrated life. Uh, you know, with the age like that, it, it has to be celebrated. That for the Christian is not a sad thing. It uh, actually celebration is a, is a graduation. Of course, sad because we are parted and we will miss the person that leaves us. 
we will miss them so much, uh, miss them deeply. But actually, uh, the truth is, it's a celebrated life, right? Because we know Jesus. We know Jesus. Amen. Today, my sharing is Jesus, my living hope. Jesus, my living hope. Is my microphone is lower down, is it? Can you put up a bit the monitor? Like I am shouting here. <clears throat> Just put up the monitor a bit. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Okay. Jesus, my living hope. When we were singing that song on Friday, uh, actually I was preparing and I was listening to that song uh, uh, last week. Uh, I mean, this, early this week. So I thought, wow, uh, I think it's a good message to preach about Jesus, my living hope. My living hope. Indeed, we have a living hope. Our hope is not uncertain. Our hope is not in vain. Our hope is sure. That's why it's a living hope. It's a living hope. And we need to think about this. Today we focus on 1 Peter. So if you have your Bible, you can turn into 1 Peter chapter 1. Uh, I will uh, base my sermons uh, in that chapter today. Okay, so just, just open your Bible to 1 Peter and we will... Uh, look at the scripture from there. I'm, I'm taking all my outlines and my notes from that chapter alone. First Peter chapter 1. Jesus is my living hope. Jesus is my living hope. We, we receive this faith and believe. People call this religion. If we are categorized in this world as part of a religion, one of the religion in this world. All right? We, we, we do not receive this religion a vain and a dead religion. We are serving a living God. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is alive. God is alive. All right. Last Friday, we celebrate Good Friday where Jesus died on the cross. He was crucified. All the sufferings that he has to go through. And he was crucified. And then he was buried. Yesterday, Jesus was in the tomb. But according to the Bible today, this morning, Jesus rose from the dead. That is the first day of the week. Actually, today, Sunday, in the Jewish calendar, it is called the eighth day. The eighth day. Palm Sunday was the first day. All right? But this is the, the eighth day. Jesus resurrected on the eighth day. The eighth day is the beginning. It's called the beginning. So Jesus is the beginning. The beginning of new life. He is the beginning, the first who rose from the dead, Jesus. So we celebrate this. That's why Christians, we worship God on Sunday. This is one of the reasons why, because Jesus rose from the dead on Sunday. That is the eighth day, the eighth day. Not on the uh, seventh day. That is Saturday. Some people still believe on the seventh day or the Sabbath day. So they still worship God according to the Jewish calendar, the Sabbath day. But we celebrate Jesus on the eighth day. That is the Sunday according to our calendar. That's one of the reasons. So when people ask you why you, why you worship Jesus on Sunday, why you have worship service on Sunday, it's very simple because Jesus rose from the dead on Sunday. On the eighth day. And the apostles did that. When you read the Acts of the Apostles, they gather on Sundays. Yes, they still keep the Sabbath, but they were gathering on Sunday. You read the book of Acts. You read the letters of Paul. The epistles. They gather on Sundays. So Jesus brought this change. We need to remember his resurrection because his resurrection is the foundation of our faith. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, if Jesus did not rise from the dead, then our faith is in vain. There's no point to come to church and worship the dead Jesus. But our Jesus is not dead, but Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. So our faith stand on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's no Celebration if there is no resurrection. There is no Christian church if there is no resurrection. 
Maybe Christian religion will have, but we do not have Christian church, a living church. Because Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a relationship with God. Hallelujah. So 1 Peter, we look at 1 Peter from chapter 1. But before that, uh, talking about Peter the Apostle, some Bible commentary or Bible teachers call him the Apostle of Hope. Because this is what he's talking here. Talk about our hope, our living hope. He was called the Apostle of Hope. When Peter wrote this uh, letter, it was a time of heavy persecutions. Heavy persecutions. Just imagine it, the time. Today, we are in the different uh, situation because we are in this pandemic. Well, if you compare the pandemic and also the perse persecution before, maybe uh, different, but actually have no, not much different because... The pandemic today, the virus today is very deadly, right? I mean, we thank God for vaccination and all that, but the virus is very deadly, and many people has died, right? But again, this was written during the persecution, heavy persecution, and it is important to have faith in Christ and really believe in Christ during that time, and living for Christ. Why? Because that is the only way that you can live your life with total victory and freedom. Because if you believe in Christ, when you are persecuted, will not be a problem to you. Right? They can rejoice in the midst of persecutions. They can be strong in the midst of persecutions. Why? Because they have a living hope. Jesus rose from the dead. And also in 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, let me read from verse 1. Peter, he said, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers. Some other translation uh, translate that pilgrims. The, to the pilgrims. Here in the kingdom it says to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. So I just want to pick up the word strangers or pilgrims. Very interesting, that translation. The meaning of the word. It is a compound word. Uh, three Greek words was combined together. That is uh, pilgrim or strangers. In the Greek word is parepademos. Parepademos, it means... Um, you know, they, they, they translate it like this. But of course, there are three Greek words. means para, means alongside. Epi means upon. And demos, uh, uh, talking about a people of a hidden city. A pagan city or hidden city. But it is translated like this. Uh, in the Thayer definitions. So, strangers is defined like this. One who comes from a foreign country into a city or land to reside there by, by the side of the natives. That is a stranger. So joining in a strange place of foreign means you are from a foreign country, you, you live in a foreign country, you're a foreigner, live in a foreign country alongside with the people there. All right? I mean, we can relate that. All right? um, most of us, we are not uh, original uh, native Malaysian, right? So we are here, Chinese, Filipinos, or some other races, which is not the um, original uh, Malaysian. But our, our forefathers came over here long, long time ago, and, and they live alongside with the people in the native here. The same thing happened with other countries like America. You know, so many nationalities in America coming all the way from their countries and live in America, live alongside with the people in America. That is the word used here, strangers. Strangers. Let me go on. In the New Testament metaphor in reference to heaven as the native country that is talking about us, one who sojourn on earth. That is the Christian. So Peter is using this word to, to show us that actually we are foreigners. We, we are living in this earth. We are a people of heaven. 
We are a people of heaven living in this earth alongside with the people of the earth. We need to remember that we are here. We are sojourners. We are not permanent here. We are temporal. Hallelujah. Temporal. So we are just living here temporary, living along with the people here. But we have a land, we have a place, we have a home, we have a country there. That is what Peter used uh, in this word. Another definition, he said, one, one who stays in a place as a stranger or visitor. So we are just visitor here. That's why it's so important to... To be established in our faith. To really know who we are in God through Christ Jesus. To have that hope in us. You know, don't, don't make plans as if that you will live here forever. You will not live here forever. Amen. Don't make plans as if that you will be living here forever. No, it's useless. Live here, enjoy your life in serving God, knowing God, searching, pursuing God in your life. Live here in the fullest potential, in the fullest, you know, blessing that you want to enjoy here on earth while serving God. But one of these days, we will go home. Say amen. We will go home. That is what we are. That is what we are. We will go home. Some go home early. Some go home late. All right? Some people, we say, you know, we, we, we thought they will die early, but then we wait and wait and wait, you know. They won't die. All right? My brother-in-law, the mother, was bedridden for more than 20 years. And they... They've been praying for her to go, but she don't want to go. <laughs> she, so my, my elder sister, uh, you know, she was telling us, you know, taking care of the mother-in-law. Um, it was very hard for her. So, so many years in taking care of the mother-in-law, all right? But then at last, after more than 20 years, she passed away, all right? Suffer like that, wow. But some people go early. Some people go very slow one, all right? Sounds like very old. Wow. Just imagine that. So we are strangers. We are visitors here. That is the word that Paul used here. And he wrote this letter to the strangers that is scattered abroad. Talk about the Christian who believe in Christ. They were scattered abroad because of the persecutions that happened they have to run. They have to go to other cities, to other countries, you know. But they run with the gospel. They bring the gospel with them. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. So through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have a living hope. The word living hope there is zao. Means literally living, you know. Living or lifetime. Or alive, or quick, or quicken. So our hope is a living hope. It's not a dead hope. Why we have this living hope? Because Jesus is alive. He is resurrected. He rose from the dead. Right? He rose from the dead. Very interesting. But you know, when Jesus was arrested, when Jesus was taken in the garden, and the disciples saw it. Just imagine the, the reaction of the disciples. Because for three years they've been with Jesus. And Jesus preached the kingdom of God to them. And they begin to realize that Jesus is the Messiah. He is the Messiah that God sent, the anointed one. But maybe the understanding is different. They thought he's the Messiah, the anointed one that God will send to take over the Roman Empire. To become the new king of the Jews during the Roman rule. So they had this kind of expectancy. That's why Judas went to that extreme to the extent that he tried to plan things out so that Jesus will reign as king. Right? That's why Jesus was sold. 
Judas was setting up so that Jesus will be pressed in a corner and Jesus will manifest his glory and power and take over the Roman rule and reign as the king of the Jew. But his plan backfired. <laughs> his plan did not come true because God's way is not man's way. God's thought is not man's thought. God does not follow the plan of man. Man has to follow the plan of God, right? So just imagine the disciples when Jesus was taken, he was crucified, and then he was buried. Just imagine the discouragement that they had as, as if that their hope died when Jesus was taken. You know, just imagine when, when Jesus was arrested, he was taken and he was tried, he was weep, and he was crucified. And at last he died on that cross and the disciples saw it. I believe the disciples just look at that with a gap and say, huh? We thought that he will be our king. We thought that he will release all of his power and glory. And defeat the Roman rule and reign as king of the Jews. Whoa. He's no more. He's dead. Their hope died. Imagine Peter. His hope died. He was so discouraged and devastated. Maybe Peter was thinking, he said, if Jesus become king, sure I will become a prime minister. Sure, I will become one of the political leaders under Jesus' rule. Wow. But he was discouraged and devastated when Jesus was arrested and taken. And because of that, if you read the book of John in the last chapter, the Bible says Peter went fishing. He went back to fishing. He went back to his old work, old job, went back fishing. And then he told the rest, he said, I go fishing. You want to go with me? <laughs> so they went back fishing. So discouraged. Don't know what to do. Go fishing. Imagine. These things happened to them. Their hope died when Jesus was taken. Yeah. That is why Judas hanged himself. Because his hope died. He thought he planned so that Jesus will you know, manifest his glory and power to reign as king. But then his plan backfired. His hope died. He hanged himself. That is why Cleopas and the other disciples went back to their village on the road to Emmaus. And Jesus joined them. Because no more in Jerusalem. The person that we thought to be king of the Jews has died. Now he is in the tomb. So they went back to their village on the road to Emmaus, Cleopas and the other apostle. That is why they were hiding in the upper room when Jesus died on the cross. The disciples, they gathered together and hide themselves in the upper room. Their hope died. Now they're thinking, oh, Jesus was crucified, arrested, crucified. And after they arrest and kill Jesus, for sure they will come and look for us. So they were hiding in the upper room. Their hope died. Fear now gripped their hearts. They do not know what to do. They went to hide. But on Sunday morning, just imagine, yeah, on Sunday morning they were hiding there. And these ladies came to the tomb and they found out that Jesus rose from the dead. The angel told them, Je Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene. And these ladies came to the disciples and told them. Out of excitement, Peter and John ran to the tomb of Jesus and looked. And they cannot find Jesus. Just imagine the, their hearts beating so fast because of the excitement. Now the words of Jesus coming back into their mind. Jesus said the son of man will suffer and they will kill him. But on the third day he will rise again. Wow. Just imagine their hearts is beating fast and they are thinking, yeah, I remember Jesus said on the third day he will rise again. And I think his word is true. Now we see his tomb is empty. 
Jesus arose and the ladies told us that the angels told them that he is not here but he is risen. The joy come back. Their hope alive again. The excitement, the joy come back and the boldness return. Wow, so powerful. So powerful. Their faith restored, their confidence restored, their joy restored, their boldness restored. That's one of the reasons why they can come out from the, the upper room and face the reality. When you read the book of Acts, they are Pentecost, they are preaching publicly. They are being warned in next chapter 4, but after that they went out again and preached publicly. They keep on preaching the word that Jesus is risen indeed. And that is one of the reasons why they have this boldness and confidence to preach the resurrection of Jesus because they saw it that Jesus rise from the dead. Come on, say amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. First Peter chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope. That is the King James. <clears throat> Some other version says living hope or hope that lives on. Unto a living hope. Or lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So we have this living hope because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Wow. I was reading Psalm 116 this morning. He said the Lord is good. The Lord is gracious. gracious. He said, yeah, our God is merciful. Well, that touches my heart, really touches my heart. He is gracious. He is merciful. He said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a living hope or lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When I read that today, talking about God is so merciful, then I said that the Lord just remind me. Because sometimes we think that God loves us. We know that God loves us. And we always say that God loves us. You know, but sometimes we do not understand. And because of our human mind, our human mind is very limited. We, we cannot comprehend. We cannot grasp how much God loves us. Like almost no words can describe that, the love of God for us. To me, the most I can say that God is crazy about you. That is how much he loves you. He's crazy about you. And it is the same with him, his mercy. We cannot imagine the mercy of God. He is merciful. Our human mind limits us. That's why many people, they cannot turn to God, they cannot... Go near to God because of the human mind and human, you know, this, this emotion it really, uh, what do you call this, limit us to understand this mercy and love of God. And because of that, because we do not understand the mercy and the, the love of God it, because of this limitation. So we thought that God loves us less. That God less merciful on us. We thought that God is angry with us. We thought that God is wanting to judge us. Right? But the truth is, He loves you so much. He's crying for you that you will return to Him. He's waiting for you. His mercy is waiting for you just to accept Him, accept His mercy and forgiveness in your life. God is there. Anytime we return to him, he is there to accept us. Hallelujah. What a time runs so fast. I want to share to you 
what our living hope brings us here in this first Peter. So I want to read all of this. And I will pick up some of the things from there. Number one, what our living hope brought to us. Verse 4 and 5. He said, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fades not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Number one, what our living hope brings us. Number one, our living hope gets us an inheritance. We have this inheritance. When Peter talk about inheritance, he talk about your living hope. When we talk about living hope, he talk about your salvation. It's sure. It is sure. But I want to I want to share to you something here. Why it is sure? Why it is there? Why this living hope become an inheritance? We have inheritance there. In that country, in heaven, our living hope is there. Our inheritance is there. And he gave us the nature of our inheritance. He said it is undefiled. It is uh, incorruptible. That fades not away. And it is reserved. There are four words here I want to share. The nature of our inheritance. He said incorruptible. The word incorruptible in the Greek is aptartos. We don't have to worry about that. Aptartos. It means not liable to corruption or decay. It is imperishable. So the nature of your inheritance, this living hope, this inheritance, this salvation that is reserved for you in heaven is imperishable, not li liable to decay. That is so precious. Not liable to corruption. It will not be corrupted. Not like this present world. This world is getting bad. Some people say the world is getting old. Things in the world will perish, will decay. But our inheritance in heaven will never, will never be corruptible. Number two is undefiled. Your, your inheritance in heaven is undefiled. In the Greek is amiantos, meaning not defiled or unsoiled. Does not get dirty. Amiantos. It means it will never get dirty. It will never be defiled. Never be soiled. Not like this earth. Or the inhabitants of this earth. Number three, he said, your inheritance will not fade away. Will not fade away. You know, gold is good. But gold, if you just keep it like that, sometimes it will fade. And you, you need to polish it. You need to bring it back to the uh, goldsmith. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, they can do it for you. So it will look shiny again. Right? It's the same thing with other material like silver or brass. Brass can be beautiful when, when you polish it. You know, I saw my father doing that. You know, he liked to make some things out of brass. Polish. And then it become very beautiful, very shiny. But if you just leave it like that, it will corrode and it will fade. Right? But our inheritance will not fade away. In the Greek is amarantos. Means unfading. Things in the world will get rusty, will fade. Many things in the world. Even, even human being also will deteriorate, will fade. You know? When we are younger, we look glowy, right? Glowing, glory and all that. But when we're getting old, the glory sometimes no more there, right? But everything in this world will decay. But your inheritance will not. Because he says it is incorruptible, it is undefiled. Wow. It, it does not 
fade away. And number four, it is reserved in heaven for you. The word reserve is terio, means to watch, to observe, to guard, to protect, to reserve, to set aside. So your inheritance in heaven is being set aside for you. It is protected. It is guarded. Nobody can take it from you. But how to keep it there? Go back to 1 Peter chapter 4, uh, chapter 1, verse 5 now. He said, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Two things. It is reserved. Why? It is kept by the power of God and your faith. So, two things here involved. God and you. Of course, the power of God, guard, protect your inheritance. That is God's role. But also your faith protect your inheritance. Because if you are not faithful with God, you will miss it. If you backslide, if you turn your back from Jesus, if you renounce Jesus, if you live in sin, then you forfeit your inheritance in heaven. All right? But those people who believe in eternal security, they said no. You know, those people, you know, somebody asked me the other day, he said, Pastor, what is the uh, difference between relationship with God and fellowship with God? Because somebody says your relationship with God will never be broken. Your fellowship can be broken, which is quite true. But I don't agree when, when you say your relationship, because you know Jesus, you believe in Jesus, and you said your relationship with God cannot be broken, even though you fall into sin, or you sin, you live in sin, you turn your back to Jesus, your relationship with God cannot be broken. That is not true. That's not true. Yes, your, your fellowship can be broken. Of course, when you live in sin, if you don't cultivate that relationship with God, then you don't have a good fellowship with God. But the fellowship is maintained by the relationship. The, fellowship, the relationship also is maintained by the fellowship. You need these two together. Right? So he said here, this inheritance is kept in heaven for you by the power of God. Through faith. That is your faith unto salvation. So these two things combined together. It's, it's you and God. Yes, God is doing his part to keep your inheritance there. But you need to do your part in living out your faith. Be faithful with God. So your inheritance unto salvation will be ready to be revealed in the last time. Or oh, it means when you go there, when you arrive there, it's ready to be given to you and you will receive that And yeah, of your faith. He said at the end of your faith, which is the salvation of your soul. Number two, what our living hope brings us. It brings, uh, our living hope makes us to rejoice greatly. To rejoice greatly. Verse, verse, seven, uh, verse 6 and 7. He said, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness, though through manifold temptation, mean persecutions. Through many persecutions, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold, that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Our living hope will make us to rejoice greatly. We can live in praising and worshiping God, thanking God, whatever situation that we are in. Hallelujah. Now, I remember our brother Paul who passed away last year. Because in the, towards the last part of his life, we saw him going down. At the time, he still came to church. He came to church. He said, hey, Paul, you, you are losing weight. What happened to you? He said, oh, I, I don't really eat good, no appetite, you know. But I'm okay, I'm okay. Are you sure you're okay? Did you check doctor or not? He said, no, I didn't go to doctor, but I'm fine. I'm okay. And then after a few weeks, he come again to church and then losing some more weight. Then we told him, I said, you need to go and see doctor. Very important. Okay, okay, okay. 
Then after that, he'd been missing from the church. We went to see him in his house. We sit him there. And he was in his house. How are you, Paul? Oh, praise the Lord. He always said, praise the Lord, you know. He always give glory to God, this guy. He loved God. And he, he told us, he said, uh, the doctor said, I got this problem and that problem. And then we visit him. Quite often we visit him. Until we always go to his house. He's sitting in his chair. Later on, he cannot walk properly. He has to lie down. And after that, later on, we saw him lying down on his bed. And after the visit again, we saw him. He already, they already uh, brought a bed for him, you know, so that they can adjust the bed, lift up and lie down the bed. And he has, has been bedridden now. But every time we go and see him, he will raise his hand and say, praise the Lord. And then later on, like he couldn't talk anymore. He couldn't eat. But every time we visit him and pray for him, he's still doing like that and saying amen and agreeing. What a man. Because he knows his Jesus. He can rejoice in his suffering. And uh, it was a joy to conduct his funeral service. It was a joy because we know he is with the Lord. He is with God. Right? We wish that he can be with us longer. But the Lord called him home. He said, greatly rejoice. You greatly rejoice. Though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptation or persecutions or suffering. For a season. Our sufferings are for a season. So let us rejoice because we have this living hope. That's why we can live in this world in freedom, in joy, in faith. Why? Because Jesus is alive. And because we have this living hope, we can rejoice. Number three, our living hope make us to love the unseen Jesus. We cannot see Jesus today. But we love him. Why? Because of this living hope. We knew, know that he rose from the dead. The Bible says so. We can read that in the scripture. And we can believe that because not only the Bible says that Jesus rose from the dead, but it was prophesied many hundred years before by the prophets, by men of God, women of God in the Old Testament. They told us that God will send his Jesus and he will die. And on the third day he will rise again. And that what exactly happened to Jesus. And we have some testimony and records in the New Testament. After the resurrection of Jesus, the apostle was preaching. Jesus was appearing to them. And Jesus was talking to them and guiding them and confirming the word with signs and wonders and miracles. And because of that, because what the Bible says, we believe that Jesus is alive. And not only that, he sent the Holy Spirit into our hearts, that witness in our spirit that Jesus is alive. Our faith tells us that he is real. We can know him spiritually. We can know him. We can be aware of his presence. We have this inner knowing that he is alive. And because of that we love him. We love and we can love the unseen Jesus. In verse 8. Whom having not seen you love. In whom though now you see him not. Yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. He said even though you do not see him. But you love him. That is what our living hope brings to us. We love Jesus because he's alive. Number four, our living hope makes us to receive salvation of our soul. Verse 9 to 12, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. So we need to make sure that we will go right to the end of our faith. Don't stop halfway. Don't 
just because of discouragement disappointment you stop walking with god you stop believing jesus and because all this discouragement disappointment makes you to be tired in life you said there is no use to believe in jesus so i quit no the bible says receiving the end of your faith that is living your faith to the end come on say amen You need to live your faith to the end. He, he already mentioned that our suffering, our persecution, our, uh, the suffering that we have to go through now is only for a season. For a season. If you think you enjoy the world, let me tell you, when you go to heaven, you will never be thinking to come back to the world. Because heaven is full of life. Heaven is full of life. Verse 10, the salvation of your soul, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed, not unto themselves, Not to the prophets, not to the forefathers, not to the patriarch, not to the Old Testament people, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent from, down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Even the angels are jealous about this. The angel, they, they desire to see this. But it was not given to them. It was given to you and I. Come on, say amen. That is what our hope brings us. I want to close with this. few more. How to remain in our living hope. How to stay there. Again, in 1 Peter, we come back in verse 13. Number one, you need to gird the loins of your mind. Means you need to prepare your mindset. You need to protect your mind. You need to protect what you believe in Christ and all. He said, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You need to gird, you need to, you know, put on the belt, like put on the belt, gird your mind. You need to be set. You need to be fixed. I won't be moved. It will not be loose. I hold on tightly to this inheritance, to this living hope. I hold tightly. Gird up the loins of your mind means be fixed. You need to decide. Embrace it. I have made decision. Jesus is my living hope. Jesus is my savior and nothing else. I will believe in Jesus right to the end. That is girding up the loins of your mind. Number two, be obedient. Verse 14, as obedient children, not fashioning yourself according to the former loss in your ignorance. Don't go back to the old life. But be obedient as obedient children. Be obedient to God. Be obedient to His word. Just do what the Bible says. Live for Jesus. Live for God. Obey the word of God. Come on, say amen. That is how you remain in your living hope. Number three, be holy. Verse 15 and 16. He said, but, but as He which has called you is holy, So be ye holy in all manner of conversation or all manner of lifestyle. Because it is written, be ye holy, God said, for I am holy. That's how you remain in your living hope. Number four, live in the fear of God. Verse 17, and if you call on the Father who without respect a person judges according to every man's work, who passed the time of your sojourning here, In fear means you need to live in the fear of God. You need to uh, pass the time of your sojourning here or living in this world temporary. So because we are living in this world temporary, our time is short. We don't live here permanently because of temporal living here in this world. We are just passing through. We need to live in fear. That is the fear of God. Respecting God. Say amen. 
For example, like those foreigners here in Malaysia. When you live in Malaysia, you need to live in fear. In a way, means you need to live in fear of the government. Obey the rules and the regulation. Obey the law. That is how we live. In Malaysia, if you want to live freely here in Malaysia, if you're a foreigner, you need to abide by the law. So we as citizens of heaven, we live in this world passing through. We are sojourners and we are temporary here in this world. We need to live in fear. That is the fear of God. Say amen. Number five, you need to remember that, that Jesus redeemed you by his blood. Verse 18 to 21, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation or lifestyle received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish, without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him from the dead and gave him the glory that your faith and hope might be in God. So Jesus' blood redeemed us. We were not redeemed by corruptible things like silver, like gold. But we are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Number six, how to remain in your living hope. In verse 22, we need to love one another fervently. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. And number seven, remember, it is the word that keeps us alive. 23 to 25. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the word of God, which lives and abides forever. For all flesh is as grass. And all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers. And the flower thereof falls away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word by which the, the gospel is preached unto you. That is how we live in our living hope. Jesus indeed is our living hope. I encourage you, you cannot remember everything, you go back to the YouTube, I will send this video to you. But if not, you can read back the first Peter and meditate it by yourself. And see what God will speak to you through this. Talking about your living hope. Talk about the inheritance that God has given to you. And talk about how do we live and remain in that living hope that God has given to us. So today is really a celebration. Uh, I see people sending um, photos and sending greetings about Resurrection Sunday. Right? Greetings one another. Jesus is alive. He is not here, for he is reason and all. You know, let us spread this gospel. Let us spread this good news to everybody. Jesus is alive. And because Jesus is alive, we can be alive. Our hope is alive. We have this living hope because our God is alive. He is not dead. And I pray that this resurrection power, the experience of this resurrection power will follow us every day. That it will give life to you. It will give strength to you. When you face situation, when you face trials and testings, when you face problems, you will remember the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ in your life. You know, we cannot imagine the power of God and in this resurrection, how God raised Jesus from the dead. But if you just put your faith in that, believing that <coughs> in your life, then you will have this living hope in you. Jesus is alive in your hearts. He is alive in your family. He is alive here in this church. He is alive with you wherever you are. Jesus is alive. And we need to give him all the glory and all the praise. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands. Lift your hands and lift your eyes to Jesus. And just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the resurrection power. Musician, come please. Let us sing that song again. Um, my living hope. Thank you, Jesus. As a close today, as we close, we sing this song. Jesus, my living hope. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. 
Thank you for encouraging us. I pray for the power of the resurrection will touch our life. Bring answers to our prayer. Lord, will lead us into breakthrough. Will lead us into victory. Lord, whatever situation that we are in, we will have the victory in Jesus' name because we have this living hope. Living hope in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. Liberation, I turn to heaven. Spoke your name into the Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows Of my soul The work is finished The earth is written Jesus Christ My living Lord so great a mercy, what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. Hallelujah! Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, that has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe Out of the silence, the roaring lion Declared the grave has no claim on me Jesus, yours is the victory Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, that has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Come on, sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. The one who set me free, hallelujah, that has lost his grip on me, you have broken salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. One more time, hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, that has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, say Jesus, Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. You are my living hope, Jesus. You are my living hope. 
You are my living hope. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that you revive our faith. Revive our love for Jesus today. Revive us because of the resurrection of Jesus. Bring healing. Bring your touch to us, Lord. Bless every one of us, all the families, the businesses, our jobs, our children in their studies. Lord, bless. Revive it in Jesus' name. Touch us. Those who have health issues, you bring healing. You break the power of sickness. You break the power of diseases in Jesus' name. Lord, bring healing. Release your healing right now. Release it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come, Lord, touch each and every one of us. We thank you for this. Thank you for this. As we live from here, let your presence go with us throughout this week. Just fill us with the presence of God. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you for your precious word. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. Good to see you. Regalina, Brother.